Gestational Diabetes 2. This is our second video on GDM, and here we're going to be focusing on risk factors, diagnosis, and associated risks of the condition. Take a look at our first video, all about the definition and physiology of GDM. Okay, so let's start off with risk factors. The strongest predictor is previous gestational diabetes. The recurrence risk is around 30 to 70% in subsequent pregnancies. Next, we've got ethnicity, essentially South Asian, Black Caribbean and Middle Eastern ethnicities have a higher risk of developing GDM. Next up is obesity, so women with a BMI over 30. We've got previous macrosomia. Then we've got women with a family history of diabetes and those suffering from PCOS. These risk factors are important when we decide to screen the pregnant population for GDM. Who shall we screen? Like all other screening programs, for it to be effective, we screen the section of the population which are at higher risk, which in this case covers those patients with one of the following. Previous GDM, BMI more or equal to 30, previous macrosomia weighing 4.5 kilos or more, a family history of a first-degree relative with diabetes, and minority ethnic groups. All of these patients are screened for GDM with an OGTT, an oral glucose tolerance test. This is performed at 24 to 28 weeks. What does this test involve? So essentially, the patient is first asked to fast overnight. The next morning, they will first have a blood test taken, checking their fasting blood glucose level. Then they will drink a sugary drink containing 75 grams of oral glucose. And then have blood tests repeated one hour and two hours after the drink to assess how much glucose remains in their bloodstream. Okay, so then a diagnosis of GDM can be made depending on the results. Different sets of recommendations have got different values, and here we are comparing the NICE guidelines to the IAD-PSG guidelines, which are the International Association of Diabetes and Pregnancy Study Groups. So starting off with NICE, GDM is diagnosed with either a fasting blood glucose of 5.6 millimoles per liter or more, or a 2-hour blood glucose of 7.8 millimoles per liter or more. While with the IAD-PSG guidelines, the fasting must also be 5.6 or more, the 1 hour 10.0 or more, and or the 2 hours 8.5 millimoles or more. Now why do we make all of this fuss about checking and diagnosing GDM? What are the risks of diabetes in pregnancy? The risks can be divided into those affecting the mother and the baby. First, we're going to take a look at the maternal risks. So these women are at higher risk of developing a miscarriage, preeclampsia, preterm labor, and in previously diabetic patients, diabetic retinopathy can worsen. Now, fetal risks include stillbirth, congenital abnormalities, most commonly cardiac, macrosomia, birth injury, perinatal mortality, and postnatal problems such as hypoglycemia. Stay tuned for my next video to discuss treatment and postpartum care. Like and subscribe.